Hi everyone, I'm McDysis, and this is Clock Tower. I've been meaning to make this for a while because it's one of my oldest speed games, but Clock Tower actually has a really neat speedrunning scene. And while a lot of the categories do have RNG, I want to show you a category called Glitch D and how it has no RNG and is a very neat game in general. Uh, first things first, understand a Clock Tower has about nine endings, they all have their differences. Uh, this would tell me the any percent category because it is the fastest ending you can beat Clock Tower with. It's a bad ending, but it is the fastest, and it would, like, we don't use any percent, but that's just kind of how it goes. So this would be Glitch D, so this would be the D ending category, and I think it's the, one of the coolest to learn, because it's just very impressive, you have a lot happening, and it's honestly a two-minute category. This timer's happening because, well, I just kind of want to show you how long it takes to explain it. This is my own personal reference. So anyway, uh, the way you do this is, you don't want to do Game Start. Game Start gives you an intro screen, it's like a prologue. You don't want that. You want quick start because this will start you right in the action. Um, keep in mind, I'll show off a regular run at the end of this as well, all in action. But I'm going to explain every single part, breaking it down. Anyway, three, two, one, let's go. So with Clock Tower, again, you're immediately going to go left. You start in a foyer, there's a door, start going left. When you hit this next room, you want to go in the first door you see. So it's a pretty quick movement, and you want to be quick with your hands. Now, whenever I move, I'm using left and right shoulder buttons because you can run this way, as you can see. You can actually run using the shoulder buttons. You never want to use this and the action button to move. You only want to move, or you only want to use the directionals when you're doing actions. So I'll run over here, and then when I get close, I push the action, which would be a Y. So while we're doing this, Y is actions. Uh, a is the red button. That is uh, item menu. So you'll see in a moment. Uh, X is cancel, and B is a panic button. You don't need to worry about that one. Anyway, though, you're going to get the rock you got, and you can just go straight here. Uh, this will be much faster later when I kind of put it all together, but I need to break this all down now so people understand. So now that we're here, um, normally throughout the game, there are a bunch of ways where your friends will die. Uh, there are three, three locations. The foyer, uh, the courtyard, where I'm in right now, and the bathtub. We're not going to do the other two, um, the foyer or the bathtub, because there's a long, but I do want to mention that once I pass this tree, you will see our first death. You don't want to do this. This is bad, but I need to show you what happens. A scream will happen. And as you can see, it takes forever for Anne to die. It's long. It's like 30 seconds. I'll say you doing cuddles. So we're having a good day today. You don't want this. You can see how long it takes. I may be wondering, oh, if this takes so long, why would you go this route? This is, this is long. This isn't good. Still happening, by the way. I'll say you doing how a Juku star will be doing good. There it is. You want to know be doing well? It takes forever for her to spawn, and then at this point, a friend has died. So this is slow. And also, if you're not doing the speedrunning route, you'd be stuck here. You can't get out. You'd have to eat a fight with Bobby, because you can't actually move this box. Because you can only move this box if you're not in panic. So, why did I show you that? Why did I do that? I want to show you that I'm not lying to you. That death scream exists there in that plane. That will always happen. If you pass that tree. What if I told you that, that we can pass it without doing that? Ho ho ho, the speedrunning meme. What if I told you we could? Well, how are we going to do that? So, as you may have noticed while running, Jennifer takes really wide turns. So, if I end up going right and left and alternating, you'll see Jennifer takes these really big turns. And the turn actually kind of places her in a different spot. So, the turning foot, which you can kind of see going further out... That's not her actual placement. Her placement's rooted in her um, base foot. It's so like, whichever foot's not turning. Uh, I use that because it's hard to say right and left when I'm looking at her because her body's turning in weird ways. But keep that in mind. As she's turning, her position's going to be rooted in this, like, the middle. It's not going to be rooted on the turning foot. And you can usually see she has a little bit of a drawback as she returns back to the center at the finish of a turn. But, as I'm turning, why I keep doing this, is you can actually cancel a turn, like so. You kind of saw it right there, let me do it again. You can cancel a turn. So she doesn't run back to the middle. That's a neat trick. Because, by canceling the turn, you actually shift her movement directly to the turn side. So if she goes far enough on the left, I'll stay on the left. I was going to plant a uh, dupe hide, I hope you good. So what does that mean? Well, as we know, if I pass this line... I will get a scream. Again, I will show you. It's always consistent about this line. Scream. Might be a little bit more to the left, but you get the picture. 
if I can use the movement shifting, I might be able to skip that. The scream is on a certain foot trigger, and it's waiting for Jennifer's feet to pass it. Once she steps on it, that's how it goes. Ignore her whole upper body. Only pay attention to her feet. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this kind of movement. I'm going to do that turn, and I'm going to pass the death trigger without causing it to happen. If I do it properly, you'll see me run past that without a scream. So, let's try it out. Hold on. I don't have a watch. Do you hear anything? You do not hear anything. Because I have managed to now skip the death trigger. As you can see here. Uh, by the way, the way I'm doing this trick, I know I know I should have said this beforehand, but with, this is a more open area with no trees. The way I'm doing this trick is when I'm running left, I push right, and that gives me the long turn, and then I push left, stop, left. Like that. Incorrect acidic. So again, left, stop, left. So it'd be L, X, L. It takes a bit more work to get used to, but that's how that works. Now, just so I'm not lying to you, oh, you broke the game. That's not the way it works. Well, let's run back. So what? It was about, I think, this tree? It's still there. We simply moved past the death trigger, meaning it doesn't happen. So let's do it all again in fast for action so you can now see it instead of breaking it down slow. I'm going to do that part, and then we'll talk about the next part. This game has a lot of tech in it, and it's really cool. So let's assume you did the first part all fine, you're back to the courtyard. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to run left when you approach that tree. Again, just as a reminder, it's not going to be... It's not this tree, but the next one. We're going to go right, left, stop, left. And then it's a really fast movement. Once you have that, you are now good to go, and you can continue forward. So, now they're moving forward, you're going to be seeing more and more, and you're going to see that box again I mentioned. Name of the follows, by the way. Now, I can move this box, but that's slow, and you, we can't quite run through the box. Or can we? You see, I picked up a rock. Now, rocks are going to be really strong. Any item in the game is strong, because whenever you push the item menu with A, it's going to bring up a text menu, and this is an item menu. Now, by pushing the button up, open up text on the bottom. This menu on the bottom, when it has text in it, breaks the game, and it can break the game in a huge variety of ways. The first thing is, Jennifer's movement is actually based on the text on the bottom. So if I push left and item, like, kind of like, boom, you'll kind of see she can run through the box. Now, we were thinking, she just did a little scoot. She didn't run through the box. Watch. She ran through the box. I was doing hen draws, I'll be doing good. You can do that in a lot of areas throughout the game. You can skip planks, you can skip anything that's blocking your path realistically by using the text. Now, let me introduce you to a new trick. This is a minor quality of life thing, you don't have to do it as the run proceeds. It's something called lag reduction or input buffering. Now that I have an item, I can actually mash the button. And in doing so, this is going to reduce the amount of lag in the game. So the old Super Famicom games, Super Nintendo games, they have a lag in them built in. But by mashing the button, you can actually reduce the amount you have by making less happen on the screen. So watch. By mashing the button, I'm hitting lag frames, and you can see Jennifer running off ahead. That's like more noticeable in the next screen because it's much larger. Um, mashing is the best way to do it as a human being. We're going left, by the way. And you can see, um, as I run over here, Anne's not dead here either. So Anne hasn't died yet. Anne's not dead at all. I never killed Laura. No friends are dead. So really quick, just explain lag reduction. You're just going to run, and while running, you mash the item button. You're hitting lag frames while it's going, and Jennifer runs off the screen. It is much faster because nothing is happening on the screen, or much less is happening. And it saves a lot of time throughout the run. You can do this in every single screen of the game, if you have an item. This only works with an item, though. Well, the game gets really busted open when you have items. So now that we've gone left twice, we're now in the garage. Uh, for a lot of people, you know, the fastest ending is to leave in the car. So, I'm going to do some quick movement here. I'm putting my mouse cursor between the ladder and the shovel. I want to be able to gra grab this box because there's a key on here. However, we're going to do our next trick. It's going to be called text skipping. 
So text skipping is whenever you use the item menu to skip mandatory text in this game. Whenever you talk to certain things, grab certain things, they don't finish the action until the text is done. However, whenever I bring up text at the bottom, like with this rock, you're going to be able to overwrite the text and immediately shift to the end. So let's try it out. So right when I pass this, I'm pushing the buttons together. Oh, I missed it. That's fine. You can see it on the next screen. You can see the example of text. You can still happen here. Uh, and this is a better example anyway. You don't get everything first try. But I'm going to use the key on the car. And I'm going to push Y and A together. Like, so. let me do a bit of a distance so I can just kind of get it and not worry about it. Like so. Both of them together. You can see the item menu is up while I'm doing this. Normally, text will show up. But if I alternate back and forth, the text is gone immediately. Normally, that text will take somewhere like 13 seconds. It's immediately gone. Thank you for the Prime Gaming Ape Show. Enjoy the green scissors and the emotes. And thank you. So, this category actually ends after talking to the car three times. In 11 minutes, I fully explain how to beat Clock Tower and how this all works. But, how does it look in fast motion? How will it look? Also, I'll be wondering, how is this a de-ending? Isn't de-ending that thing where you go in the elevator and you die? N yes. So this is glitch de-ending. You may have noticed, nobody died. Anne will normally die in the foyer or the courtyard. She didn't die at all. I showed no dead bodies. We never even found Laura. So how is this de-ending? So in the beginning of the run, I pulled up something called the ending list. With the ending list, you have nine possible endings you can get. Each ending has very specific things you must do to get the ending. Um, throughout this run, I didn't do anything that qualified that. So the default ending, if you go in the car and you have nothing met, is you go to de-ending. If you try doing that glitch where you uh, don't kill Anne and you beat the whole game and go to the final elevator, you'll get F ending. So that's why this category is called Glitch D. Because by beating and getting the screen I got, that will qualify as the de-ending clear. And that is why that is the any percent of Clock Tower. It is the fastest possible category. It is actually faster than H ending, which is just bolting to the car. It is actually faster to get an item, avoid a death, than it is to just run to the car and eat a death. And if you're wondering what I'm talking about the death, normally Anne or Laura will die before you proceed to the game, killing one friend. Certain enemies are tied to one or two deaths. I have zero deaths. No friends died. So the game doesn't know what to give you. So it has to give you something. So it gives you D. Now, while we're doing this, I want to show you how that all looks together. Remember, you're going to start the timer right when you push quick start. And go. So immediately, I want to be going left once again. We're going left. That's good. Next, remember that door is happening immediately. I move up right on my deep on my directional pad, and I'm getting ready already. I hit the ramp. I push the button right when I hit the ramp. You want Jennifer running as much as possible. You don't want to push actions early. A lot of these actions aren't actually going to be able to give you speed. If you try clicking on them, Jennifer will walk. You want her to run as much as you can. It happens, Jenny Cat. And it does, Zombie. Now that we're here, remember, we're going to run through. We're going to run through. And once I hit, not this tree, but the next one, we're going to do our trick. So that and that. Now we keep running. You keep running. Get your rock out. Once you hit the end of this little run, what you want to do is you want to do the L and the item menu. So, ba -doom. So, like so. Once you're through, you got that part done. Now, all you have to do is make your way to the garage, and then you're good to go. Throw in your input buffering. You know what's happening at this point. Now, a little bit of a fancy boy trick you can do. You can actually cancel the slow turn by pushing LYL again, or LXL. Uh, you don't always get it, but it's nice to get it. Go left and input buffer. Input buffering is very important. It saves more time than you think. I'm going to get into something later, too, that's going to possibly piss people off. You're going all the way left here. This is a very simple route. Once you get to this room, I don't recommend input buffering because you need Jennifer to be in the same spot. Uh, you want to do a tech skip right around the time you hit the box. Now that I got it, I got the key, I'm then going to the car, doing it again. Once I got tech skip there, there, I'm going to be doing the key two more times. One time with tech skip, one time alone. Just out of the car, I'm getting ready for tech skip again. Now that I got tech skip again, what's going to happen is I am just going to push the final key button, and that will be the run in fast motion. Oh, pff, duh. And there it is once again. And that's how it looks all chained together. Now I bet you're wondering... Hey, why is the timer still running? 
So I didn't show you everything. I showed you what a run can look like if you combine it all together. But what if I told you there's something else you can do? Now for your eyes... Also, I was going to Lumberjack. For your eyes, I had to show everything off. Because you won't be able to see what I'm talking about if I don't. But remember how I mentioned input buffering is always faster if you can do it? Once you go up that hill, you always have the rock. Did you notice a spot on the run where I could have input buffered or I didn't? Yeah. So let's do that again, but slightly faster. I'm not going to show the maximum, because that's way too difficult for me, even. It's possible, but it kills a lot of runs not being able to do it. So we're going back in here. We're getting the rock again. And once I enter the courtyard, I'm going to input buffer immediately. You actually want to do a few input buffers. Even doing one input buffer will save you time. So, how does it look? Well... You want Jennifer to start running more towards the other end. And then you do it here, too. Get your rock out. And then at a certain point, you just start doing the trick blind. You'll know you got it when the menu just freezes and he doesn't let you do it anymore. Now we're going back into it. You have the input buffer while doing all the tricks. I mean, you're doing it blind. And that's why this category is so fast and difficult. The more input buffers you can throw in, the better you'll be. Now let's see how it goes. Two more screens. How's on a wise guy? Again, get towards the shovel and the ladder. You don't need to do it here. Get it there. Get in the car. Sometimes you miss the car. That's okay. What's the ultra max speed secret? So I kind of did it, but not to full degree. I'll try it. I'll try it once. However, I will be killing the uh, the timer below me because this is gonna be the end of this uh, showcase. And then remember. On the third key usage, you hit time. So I hope you enjoyed that most tutorial of Glitched Ending D. It's a really cool run with zero RNG. It's 100% skill. There's no RNG involved. It's all your own personal skill. And World the Record for this category is really short. It's really easy to get into. Um, and there's a lot of variants. Um, you can get, uh, you know, as in his moonshine. There's actually a lot of time in this. Uh, I think World of Records like a 150. Like 1 minute and 50 seconds. Uh, let me double check. World Record is a 150.23. So yes. Anyway, though, so I, I mentioned I'll show you. I'll try it out. Easy to learn, hard to master. I have a 151.53. I am behind by one second. So, let's see how I can do it. Let's see how I do. On a random throw I run. How you doing, by the way, Ms. Moonshine? Morning to you. Everything has to be perfect and fast, by the way. All your dead stops, even your even your menu yeah, menuing. I want to be out of here, but I want to say a 29 or a 30. Maybe even 28. I don't actually remember, remember entirely. That's fine. Okay, here's the pain in the ass. You see the problem? You have to do that. You either one input buffer enough where you can still see Jennifer and accurately get her there. No, it's not cutscenes. Let me let me show you again. Here's how I end up doing, it, and this is how I got my time. I'll do one how I normally do it. I input buffer to a degree. I don't maximum input buffer. I think world record might maximum do it.
But I am put buffer maybe like one, two, three. I counted like six or five, five or six times. Once you pass the input buffering, though, you're actually all good to go. Like, I not the input buffer. Once you pass the scream, you're good. It's home free. As long as you don't mess up tech skip. So I do this. Like, watch. One, two, three, four, five. And then Jennifer ends up on the left side of the screen. And then when she hits the tree, I can just do that. And then I mash it. Correct. Eighty-four. Yeah, we'll continue anyway. But you can kind of see the general mood there, and that's uh, that's why I don't maximum buffer. Also, the quick turn. Do I get it? Nah, eh, maybe. One. And let's see how it goes. What will this be? I'm assuming this is probably like a 153 or 154. Maybe even worse. Let's see. One fifty two. One fifty three. Boo. I mean, that's still top four. So, yeah, that's how that ultimately goes. Anyway, I'm probably gonna put that on YouTube as a brief tutorial to explain that to people. It's a pain in the ass as a category, it really is fun and no RNG, but it's not easy. It's really not easy. So. Yes.